Guatemala has a high volume of trauma and lacks an organized, structured trauma system. The training is designed for firefighters and other first responders in Guatemala. Currently, bleeding control techniques are not part of a firefighter training. Our training module combines a virtual reality mobile lab with an easy-to-build, low-cost simulator. Together, these two tools teach both when different hemorrhage control techniques should be used and how to properly execute them. The impact of this training will be improved to the survival and trauma patients. We truly believe that an open source, structured surgical training module could be a game changer for low middle income countries like ours. Please welcome to the stage, Sabrina Asturias, Chief of Trauma and Emergency Surgery at Roosevelt Hospital and Professor of Trauma Simulation, Francisco Marroquin School of Medicine. And Catherine Moore, President, the Intuitive Foundation. Hello, thank you so much for the introduction. And I would like to first set the stage a little bit um, about the program that we put together with SOLVE called the Global Surgical Training Challenge. Could I have the first slide, please? Just some background statistics. Every year, seven to 17 million people a year die from lack of access to basic surgical care. And even though we are performing over 300 million surgeries worldwide each year, billions of people lack access to the, even these most basic surgical services. To put this in context of why lack of access to surgery is a global health crisis, think about comparing it to the number of people who die from cancer every year which is about 10 million. We also put 40% of our global health dollars into infectious diseases. And that is an entirely rational approach. Even though when we think about the number of people who are dying from lack of access to surgery, it dwarfs things like HIV, TB, and malaria. So why are people not? approaching surgery in this way? Why, why are we spending only about 2% of our global healthcare dollars on increasing surgical capacity? And it's really because it's more rational to try to affect infectious disease. If you create a new vaccine or you create a new uh, an a antibiotic, it's complicated technology in one area, but it's easy to distribute, it's easy to scale. And people have not tackled surgical problems because traditionally we teach surgery in the apprenticeship model. See one, do one, teach one. This is how Dr. Astorias and I both learned. And yet that is not a scalable model. And so the radical idea that we came to solve with and that Solve has been helping us in the Global Surgical Training Challenge is can we create modules that will allow a clinician to self-learn. Can they teach themselves a new surgical procedure to confidence and competence using a simulator that they can create from open source materials? And this is the essence of the Global Surgical Training Challenge. But to go from all of my statistics here to really the reality on the ground, I would like to turn it over to Dr. Asturias to talk to us a bit about the problem that they're trying to solve in the Global Surgical Training Challenge. So tell us about life in Guatemala. <laughs> so to give you context of these numbers, uh, let me give you an example. Let's say we're both in a car accident. 
Your car accident happens in the US. My car accident happens in Guatemala. It is the same accident, the same car, and we actually have the same injuries. Let's say we're both bleeding. So I have a three time higher chance of dying from that same accident just because it happened in Guatemala. So I'll tell you why. Here in the US, if you get in a car accident, you call 911 and a highly trained paramedic rushes to you in minutes and takes you to a trauma center. So what happens in Guatemala? There's no 911 system. There's nobody you can call. You have the option of choosing from three different firefighter companies, but you don't know which one is closest to you. So it could take hours for somebody to get to you. And the person that gets to you is a firefighter with basic first aid training and no medical equipment. So he will scoop you up and take you to a hospital that is overcrowded, understaffed, and with little resources. So I'm probably not getting my blood transfusion. This is the reason why 90% of all the deaths from trauma in the world occur in low middle income countries. It's because we do not have trauma systems. So, so what do you have? I mean, how does, how does your system even survive in this way? So Guatemala's pre-hospital care relies on firefighters, not paramedics, to attend to any type of emergency. It could be childbirth, um, shootings, natural disasters. And there are only 10,000 of these firefighters with basic first aid training and little to no medical equipment to attend to the needs of 18 million people. Now what's special of these 10,000 is that more than half, 70% are actually volunteers that have to buy their own medical equipment and sometimes pay for their own training. So this is where Crash Savers, our team, think that we can create a positive impact in, in the system by facilitating capacity building in these firefighters. Our virtual reality mo module and our do-it-yourself simulator can actually increase the knowledge and the skill set of these firefighters. Therefore, we would increase their self-confidence and help them save lives at the same time. And, and so this is the stage where we are in this program, where we have four finalist teams who've built modules like this, and we're bringing them out into clinical use. We have uh, learners who are using these modules to self-train in the skills all over the world. This module was developed in Guatemala, but we're testing it in Sudan and Ethiopia and India because we believe that open source clinical training is universal because the needs in these different communities are universal. And so when we start to think about, so all of these teams that have moved forward and are starting to do their next round of modules will have their current modules undergoing this kind of uh, clinical evaluation where we have the learners learn the skills, they will undergo a initial clinical readiness exam, and they will perform these skills, these procedures, for the first time in patients under supervision. We're not just developing them, we're going to develop the evidence that this is safe and an ethical approach to scaling medical education. And so along those lines, uh, Dr. Astorius, what, where are you going next with your module? So, Crash Savers created a framework, a platform of how to teach a life-saving skill virtually. But this is not only for trauma. It's not only for the tourniquet that we are doing. It, is, it can be applied to any emergency skill. And uh, it could be adapted to any other low middle income country. So this is where we are now. We are actively seeking collaborators to pass on to this next phase, which is basically building upon our platform and expanding it. And so we had talked about um, tourniquets, which is sort of the basis of the, of the module that you've got right now, as well as some of the more um, advanced forms of hemorrhage control. Uh, Tell me, you'd been also talking about managing pelvic, pelvic fractures. 
Yeah, we we started with a tourniquet, which was uh, basically the easiest. It's um, because it's only like the leg. But when you have a pellet fracture, you can lose more than half of your blood. So, and it's internal bleeding. So we're basically gonna put a tourniquet on the pelvis, right? So that is our next advanced uh, bleeding technique. And keep in mind that when we're talking about training these medics, um, in the first responder community, this is largely people who have a high school education. We're not talking about training clinicians who are already surgeons. For a lot of the other modules that we are talking about, we're training people who are clinicians. For example, uh, an orthopedic surgeon who may be in a rural hospital and called upon to be able to do a C-section. At present, there's no way in our medical education system for someone who's trained as an orthopedic surgeon to easily go back and learn how to do a surgery that is expected in another specialty, such as gynecology. Nurse midwives, who would be perfectly capable of doing an external fixator on a tibula fibula fracture, that's a very common injury that happens in, with mopeds and things like that in low and middle income countries, she's got no way to go back and learn how to do the bone drilling necessary to be able to, to set this bone, yet she has all of the technical skills necessary to be able to do that. And so it is tackling this problem of how do we allow clinicians at any point in their career to learn a new procedure anywhere in the world that the Global Surgical Training Challenge is tackling. And uh, we were doing it with Solve's help. So thank you very much. Thank you.